Star Wars 7x7 episode 1898. Today, it's been two years since we've actually seen all of our friends from the sequel era movies on screen, and so there is a series of comics called Age of Resistance, which is reintroducing us to the characters and giving us a little bit more about their backstories. Today, we're going to talk about two of the bad guys, Captain Phasma and General Hux. Let's go! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. So here's the deal, the Age of Resistance series is the third series of comics that has been put out as a group of special one-shot issues. First it was Age of Republic, then it was Age of Rebellion, and now it's Age of Resistance. So we are in the final run-up to The Rise of Skywalker. All of the issues in this series have focused on one particular character, though of course other characters have been a part of the various stories. And for Age of Resistance, we are getting a number of good guys and a number of bad guys. Today we're going to look at two of the bad guy issues. That would be, of course, as I said at the top, Hux and Phasma. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about two of the good guys. And you'll have to wait to hear who we're going to be talking about until tomorrow. And even if you're not into comics, well, this is something that, as far as the characters go, might be informative of your experience for The Rise of Skywalker, so I think it is definitely worth your time, even if you're not a comics person, at least to hear what I had to say about it. And this is spoiler territory, just for the record, too, so yeah, if you intend on reading them and you haven't read them yet, then save this for a later date. But otherwise, let's dive in. We'll talk with the uh, Hux story first. And it starts out with a flashback where little Armitage Hux is being ridiculed and shamed in front of not only his father, Brendel Hux, but also another First Order officer by the name of Brooks. And this turns out to be something that's happening while he's been knocked unconscious because in actual reality, which takes place before the events of The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. He is on a shuttle that appears to have been sabotaged and is crash landing on some unnamed planet. He is there with Kylo Ren, and Ren manages to save himself and Brendel Hux, but as he politely says, oh, I only save myself, you just happen to be nearby. Thanks a lot, Kylo Ren. But for me, the big reveal that comes out of this comic is that General Hux actually knows Kylo Ren's origin. He knows knows that Ren is actually Ben Solo, the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia, aka General Leia. But that was something that I was not aware of, you know, and I think back to The Force Awakens in the scene where we first see Supreme Leader Snoke via hologram and he tells Kylo Ren that there's been, you know, a disturbance in the Force and that the BB-8 unit is in the hands of his father, Han Solo, but I think by that point, Hux has already left the assembly chamber. I think he's left the room, so I felt like that was a situation where it was possible that Hux still didn't know what Ben's origins were, what Kylo Ren's origins were, and there was nothing in The Last Jedi that seemed to indicate that he knew either, so I was rather shocked by this situation and thought, well, this is really kind of new news, and it raises the question, what is Hux going to actually do with this information? You know, he is listed in this story, which is called Marooned, in the opening information about it, the opening title crawl, if you will, even though it's not presented that way in the comic, as being third in command in the First Order under Supreme Leader Snoke and Kylo Ren. Now, of course, he's second in command because Snoke is gone. And we'll get into a little bit more of that after the break, which is not coming up yet. But... What ends up happening is that they are found on this marooned planet by a guy named Bilsma, who it turns out is from the Alderanian Palace Guard, or he was, and Hux actually recognizes the uniform somehow, so I guess he has been taught a lot of galactic history in that regard. And this guy Bilsma was not on Alderaan when it was blown up, and when it was blown up, he basically ran to the edges of the galaxy, as he puts it. But he befriends them and actually tells this guy Bilsma that the kid who's unconscious, because he's been knocked unconscious by some of the Bilsma's creatures under his command, and had his helmet knocked off, is actually the son of Leia Organa. And Bilsma believes it. It's one of those situations where 
you know, I guess Hux, knowing his galactic history, is able to drop that name. But the random coincidence of it and Bills was saying, oh my gosh, that looks like him. You know, it's one of those things where it's, it's kind of amazing that it happens that way. And ultimately, this is a situation for Hux to pretend like he's being friendly and uses the guy's long-range communications array to call for a pickup. Naturally, it's Phasma who arrives and they shoot the creatures that have been under Bilsma's command. And Hux says, yeah, I'm going to test Starkiller base on here. Let's leave this guy and kill his long-range communications array so he can't contact anybody. I have to say that really felt like an awful thing to do and certainly in line with Hux's character. And yet... I guess in some sense there is also a bit of, I don't know, karma to that, that he managed to escape the destruction of Alderaan, but he's going to have his home planet destroyed as a test run for Starkiller Base, so he ends up having the same fate as his other Alderanian compatriots. Who knows why he was off-planet, and maybe instead of running if he was part of the Palace Guard, he should have joined up with the Alliance as his first opportunity. I don't know, that... Uh, that opens up rather an interesting moral discussion, to be sure. But anyway, Hux gets back and demands that he be the one to deal with the traitor from the First Order who sabotaged his ship, which turns out to be a radar technician. That could be a wink to the Matt the Radar Technician business from Saturday Night Live. But... Ultimately, he decides that this is an opportunity to take his revenge on this officer, Brooks, who had seen him be humiliated nearby his father in that earlier flashback because the radar technician reported to Brooks. And so, yeah, that happens. But he does a little bit of monologuing, which is going to apply to what I mentioned earlier about his knowledge of who Kylo Ren really is. And I'll explain that bit after the break. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact, the premier email marketing solution for small businesses and organizations. I've used their service since 2003, and over the past decade and a half, I've watched them evolve, make the product simpler, more powerful, easy to use, and do everything that they can to help train people to use the product more effectively and for it to work with other forms of marketing like social media, for example. So, Check out sw7x7.com slash email to learn more about Constant Contact and start a free trial. Once again, that is sw7x7.com slash email for a free trial. Welcome back. So, in monologuing to this guy Brooks before he kills him, Huck says, you guys all underestimate me. You think I'm weak. You think I'm a coward. You think you can control me, but I'm not weak. I'm patient and I will have control of everything. Like this is his statement of who he is, which is also a statement to us as readers to remind us of what kind of person he is. And so as somebody who is patient like this, considering that he is walking around with the knowledge of who Kylo Ren really is, what is he going to do with that information? And is this an indication that he might try to bring this to bear in The Rise of Skywalker? You know, it puts me in mind of the whole Sith Trooper situation and, you know, where are they coming from? Is Kylo Ren going to try and command them? And could Brendel, excuse me, Armitage, Hux, use this information to try and command the Sith Troopers on his own or to take control of the First Order on its own, you know? We know Kylo has the Knights of Ren at his command. There's always a possibility that they're going to end up going rogue. Who knows what's going to happen in the course of the year in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. There are a lot of opportunities, but the fact that Armitage Hux has this particular bit of political capital he can use is very intriguing indeed and opens up some interesting possibilities for the rise of Skywalker. Now, look, I know I said at the top of the show that Phasma was on deck here, but guess what? It turns out that there was a lot to unpack from the Hux business, so I think we'll unpack Phasma tomorrow instead and we'll deal with the good guys probably... We'll see. Maybe during the week next week. Maybe next weekend. But for now, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining me for it. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.